Hello everybody out there and welcome back here with the future once again to another Netflix documentary series review over season two of The Toys That Made Us, one of my favorite documentary series on Netflix lately or in the recent past. I am really digging it. It is a toy lover's dream come true or a toy collector's dream come true or just somebody who really, really loves, you know, retro toy stuff, watching or learning about it. You will love this docuseries if you have not already checked it out. Season 1 was epic. That included episodes over Star Wars, Barbie, He-Man, Masters of the Universe, and G.I. Joe. And those were all epic, and I talk about all those in the first review that I did over Season 1 already here on my channel, which I will put up in the right on the suggested box, and you can go check that out. But now I'm going to go over Season 2, which includes episodes of Star Trek, Transformers, Lego, and Hello Kitty. And I have to admit, when I first saw the lineup, I was wondering why Star Trek was in there. They are not really a huge, memorable toy line, but when I saw the episode, it kind of goes through the ups and downs and the struggles of how they could have been a massive toy line and how they have went through many changes and a lot of hand changes over the years on who was producing the toys and it was really interesting and uh, turned out to be one of my favorite episodes of the series but yeah I'm going to uh, break these down and uh, give you a few highlights from each episode and what I liked about them but yeah I really enjoyed this and as I said in the past like I said already if you are a toy collector or a toy lover or somebody who just you know enjoys some great retro goodness this series is right up your alley um, I know it was right up my alley and I love it and I'm digging season two just as much as I did season one but I have to say season one had the stronger toy lines and hopefully in season three we can get to some toy lines like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles I would love to see I would love to see one on the real Ghostbusters or the Ghostbusters period I actually would like to see a Hot Wheels one done you know they've done some some, you know, Lego, not really an action figure. So, you know, an action figures, they're not really going for just action figures. So why not do one on the um, illustrious 50 year history of Hot Wheels since it is, you know, their 50th anniversary this year as well. Another one that I would really like to see them do is none other than the Thundercats. I would really like to see them do Thundercats. That would be really sweet to see the history of those and uh, up to modern day. There are so many different lines that I would like to see done. I wouldn't even be opposed to them doing, you know, one on just like Batman figures or Spider-Man figures or whatever, or superhero figures. Mego would be a cool one to do. All the way up to the homages that are paid today with Mego style figures that are made by different companies. But yeah, now I want to get into some of the highlights of each of the episodes in the series and tell you what I thought about them. But here is a, a little bit of a description. It says, Season Season 2 explores the inside stories of the creative minds responsible for bringing Star Trek, Transformers, Lego, and Hello Kitty to life. It says Star Trek, Episode 1, plagued by years of brand mismanagement and product inconsistency, a popular space franchise must overcome its past in a competitive toy market. I thought that was a really good episode, probably one of my favorites. You know, surprisingly so. Then you have Transformers combining ingenious Japanese toys with a creative backstory written by Marvel Comics. Hasbro introduced a line that changed the toy landscape forever. Then you have Episode 3, which is Lego. From humble beginnings in the Danish countryside, this maker of interlocking plastic bricks has become the largest toy manufacturer in the world. And then you have the girl line, or the girl episode that I like to call it, because they did Barbie in the first one, which is more towards girls. And this one here, Hello Kitty... It's more towards girls here, episode 4. And it says, with the motto, small gift, big smile, as its business philosophy, Sanrio founder Shintaro Suji turned a kawaii kitty into a global phenomenon. And I am not a huge Hello Kitty fan, but the episode was still interesting. I mean, I did watch it just for the review's sake. So yeah, I'm going to go in and give some highlights on each episode and what I thought about it. Star Trek was very, very cool episode. Like I said, at first I was like, why are they doing Star Trek, you know? because Star Trek, I just thought it was kind of weird that they were doing Star Trek because of the whole deal that Star Trek wasn't always one of the most popular toy lines. I do not think of toys when it comes to Star Trek, although I am a big fan of the Playmates run, which they do discuss in this. But it's funny because they start off the Star Trek episode showing off like the old school toys that they just took Star Trek and slapped it on the side before it became like real popular or they really were giving out the licensing. And they had these 
helmets, you know, with like lights on the top of them. Uh, it's just very bizarre stuff. They had free sickles and whatnot. Some of the highlights in it, you know, they show the first round of the Mego Trek figures, which didn't include Ahura until later. And then Ahura, you know, obviously became a big hit in the line being a um, black character of empowerment in the show. Also, uh, classic play sets like the uh, Star Trek episode, the Apple play set that they made. So some very cool stuff. And it also talks about how Mago purchased Star Trek for only $5,000, but ended up going on to make like $50 million worth in Star Trek business. It also talks about, you know, Playmates Run and then Art Asylum, who eventually became Diamond Select, who picked up the license after Playmates. And they released some really incredible pieces, actually, like the uh, Phase that was actually used in an episode of Star Trek Enterprise. Windows on the Enterprise was the episode. We have Todd McFarlane talking about how Gene Roddenberry managed to accomplish what every other creator, every artist has dreamed about. Yeah, I thought the Star Trek uh, episode was just very, very sweet. I think that uh, going through the whole history of the toys was very interesting. You know, even though they've had a, you know, kind of a scarred past in the toy industry, I hope that Star Trek can catch on and become a, you know, mainstream toy line that can compete with the other ones and I think they're getting up there but then you also have my second favorite episode which was the one on Transformers and this was very sweet because I'm a big fan of the G1 series. After that, I stopped being a fan. As a kid, I had a lot of the G1 Transformers. I don't think I had an Optimus Prime as a kid. I may be wrong because I did have a lot of Transformer toys. But I just, you know, wasn't really big on all the names and stuff as a kid. And um, I wasn't like a religious watcher of the cartoon. Although I did love that movie that they did later on that killed off all of your favorite characters. So yeah, that was what really killed my interest off in Transformers when they killed off Optimus Prime and everything in that movie. Nonetheless, I'm still a huge fan of Transformers and it was really neat to go through the whole history of how they were a totally different line in Japan. Megatron is not a villain. He is actually Japanese equivalent to a hero over there. So they just changed up the whole mythos and everything and came up with their own kind of mythos that would appease the uh, American audience instead of the Japanese audience coming up with with Transformers, the Autobots, the Decepticons. It's a really cool, interesting story on the Transformers, and it leads all the way up into, you know, like the Michael Bay movies and whatnot. And yeah, they have that real cool part about the original animated Transformers movie. So yeah, it's very cool to see. And then you had the episode 3 about Lego. That episode is very interesting because it really doesn't point at boys, doesn't really point at girls. It's kind of like in between. It just goes through the humble beginnings and how they came up with the Lego system. And basically the whole episode is about the Lego system. How it's all about the system. And when they went off the system, people didn't like that. They talk about, you know, the Bionicles. How that kind of revived Lego. The ups and downs of the companies. And in all these episodes you go you know behind the scenes and get really cool behind the scenes looks and I like how they make them kind of like they actually have actors portraying you know some of the people that are responsible for these things they have actors portraying them and uh, reenacting stories that they are telling so it's very cool to see those parts in this it kind of makes it feel a little bit different than most documentary series and then of course you have the Hello Kitty episode and I gotta say the Lego episode that's probably my third favorite of them I'd say uh, Star Trek then Transformers then the Lego and then you have the Hello Kitty of course which was still cool to see you know the humble beginnings of Hello Kitty how it came about on just like a coin purse I think it was that they started using and from there on out Hello Kitty became a worldwide symbol of um, love and compassion and caring and I don't know it's just it's kind of funny um and they do point out how Hello Kitty was uh, made without a mouth and uh, how when they made like the cartoon and everything people backlashed about him having a mouth or her having a mouth sorry but yeah not a huge Hello Kitty fan I watched the episode some of the parts I didn't pay too close attention to I really need to watch that one again but yeah for the uh, sake of this video just like the Barbie episode I went ahead and watched it I actually watched the Barbie episode again and I probably will watch the Hello Kitty episode one more time or so just to get a little bit more acquainted with some of the stuff that I might have missed on that one. I thought overall they did a great job once again and I can't wait for season three. Season three better have some
some Ninja Turtles, Ghostbusters action on there at least. And I'd love to see also like the LJN wrestling line or the WWF Hasbro line, even the WCW Galoob line, even though that's more scarce. But yeah, I'd like to see more episodes, a continuation of this documentary series. Hopefully they're getting a lot of views. If you haven't checked it out, make sure you go check it out. And yeah, guys, I want to say thanks for watching this. Make sure you hit the subscribe button if you liked what you heard. And make sure you drop a comment down below what you thought on Season 2 of The Toys That Made Us. And if you want to see more episodes and what episodes you'd like to see. And yeah, guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for the support. And it's all much appreciated here on my channel. And until next time, guys, go check out The Toys That Made Us on Netflix. And as always, till next time, peace out. Thank you.